In China, Zika have just unveiled the new Zika 7X. Uh, the performance version, which by the way, I've ordered here in Australia, the new version can do zero to 100 in 2.9 seconds. That's ridiculous. And it's got a slightly bigger battery, gets a bit more range as well. And it's got a 900 volt platform. What the hell? I don't know what's going on at Zika, what they're smoking, but whatever it is, I need some of it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. Zika 7X. They've already pre-sold nearly 3,000 of these in Australia uh, within a very short period of time. And the Australian car market's not all that big. It's already got ma way more EV choices than you get in the United States. Uh, and still, they're selling incredibly well. So obviously, I ordered one. I haven't got it yet because um, I changed my order from long-range rear-wheel drive to the performance model after I test drove them. I realized that the all drive was what I really wanted. Anyhow, Zika have an updated version of the 7X in China, but I should mention, I don't think this will get to international markets for 12 months. That's the most likely scenario, probably about a year away. And by the time this new model comes in a year, there'll be a new model in China. Upgraded model, that's what they do. They change things every year and so, if you want to wait for the new model, well, you'll be waiting forever until your death. So, I mean, honestly, that's what's going to happen. And I've I've seen thousands of comments. Oh, I'm waiting for the new version. I'm like, which new version are you waiting for? The one in twelve months, or twelve months after that, or twelve months after that? The automotive industry has changed, and I think a lot of people don't realize this. It's changed. It used to be, you know, five years you get a new model every five years. So, you know, you wait for the new model because it's gonna it's it's only twelve months away. Might as well give it another 12 months. You've just waited four years. Yeah, that makes sense, but it doesn't work that way anymore. My solar and batteries. I've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery here and I've got a big solar array. So I pay $0 for electricity. That's including charging my electric car. Resync Solar is the company that I used. I'll put a link to them in the description below. So what are the three versions? Well, there's the base model, which doesn't really sell all that well here in Australia, um, just because the other models are probably better value proposition. Anyway, the base model gets a 75 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. It's Geely's golden brick battery. So it's lithium ion phosphate and very, very high energy density. So you think it's 192 watt hours per kilogram energy density at the cell level. Whereas compare that to BOD's blade battery, the BOD battery is 165 watt hours per kilogram at the cell level. So quite a bit more energy dense. Zero to 100 takes 5.4 seconds, meaning the time has been reduced by 10%. The existing model does it in six seconds. Plus its range has increased by, I think about 10 kilometers, not, not really any meaningful change. The battery pack though, for the rear wheel drive long range and the all wheel drive, that has been increased in size. Not by much though, it's gone from 100 kilowatt hours to 103. So the real drive has 370 kilowatt, which is 496 horsepower. That's a lot of power from a single motor and can do zero to 100 in 5.1 seconds. 802 kilometers of CLTC range, which would probably work out to be approximately 650 kilometers WLTP, depending on the wheel sizes. The all wheel drive, same battery, 103 kilowatt hour battery, but it has increased its power by 100 kilowatt, 100 kilowatt. So it's now got 784 horsepower or 585 kilowatt. Crazy, right? This is a family SUV. Two electric motors, zero to 100, zero to 62 miles an hour in 2.98 seconds. It, both of these bottle models, right? the long range and the all-wheel drive. They use Cable's chill-in batteries. So they're both NMC batteries. That model though has 87 kilometers less range than the long range, 715 kilometers of range CLTC. Probably gonna work out to about 560 kilometers of range WLTP. So the, the range of both of these models would have improved by about 15 kilometers approximately, maybe 15 to 18 kilometers, somewhere around that. Probably not a noticeable difference, to be honest. The official launch has just actually happened, which is the reason for this video, because we now know what's in this car. It's as standard gets Geely's G-Pilot H7, which is their advanced driving assistance system. 
It has 31 sensors throughout the vehicle and it's powered by an NVIDIA Drive Thor U chip with 700 tops of power. 700 tops is a lot, and that's a lot more than most, most um, car, cars from, say, Japanese manufacturers and American and European cars. A lot of power, processing power. But if you compare that to the processing power of, say, for example, Xpeng's new cars, their Turing chips, or the new Xpeng, some of their new cars, they use three chips to have about 2,000 tops of computing speed. So 700 is amazing, but 2,000, it's like, wow. Anyway, the G Pilot system, there's five versions in China. Uh, we don't have that in overseas markets, I don't believe. But anyway, in China, there's an H1, H3, H5, and an H7, and an H9. So it's sort of like, like BYD's God's Eye. There's God's Eye C, there's God's Eye B, there's God's Eye A, there's God's Eye A+, all this. Anyway, yeah, similar to that system. If you get the H7 one, which is second from the top, you can realize highway you can do driving on the highway, city streets, and door-to-door -door navigation without HD maps. So Zika is saying it's basically, sounds like they're saying for self-driving, or at least that's what the media are saying in China. Will it really have that function? I don't think so. I mean, you know, they're doing a, a good a good effort to improve their self-driving features, but it won't be at that level yet. Definitely not. Anyway. Another upgrade, it's gone from 800 volt to 900 volt like the Zika 001, same upgrade as well. And that means you can charge the battery now from 10 to 80% in 10 minutes. So it can charge about 20% faster than the existing model. The existing model is already the fastest charging EV here in Australia, but this model is quite a bit faster. It's gone from, I think 13 to 15 minute charge from 10 to 80% now down to 10 minutes. So insane. To give you some context on the differences between the existing model and this new version. The existing model rear wheel drive has 310 kilowatt and 416 horsepower. So that's improved. So the new versions of the long range rear wheel drive and the standard model with lithium ion phosphate battery, they get an extra, they get an extra 60 kilowatt. Yeah, so it's about an extra 80 horsepower. The all-wheel drive, though, goes from 475 kilowatt or 637 horsepower to 585 kilowatt. So it gets an extra 110 kilowatt, which is about an increase of about 145 horsepower. Yeah, so just, you know, pretty wild numbers. Now, in China, the long-range wheel drive, the range of it has increased by 22 kilometers, CLTC. So probably a WLTP increase of 15 kilometers. So as I said before, not a big difference in range increase. It's a small difference, but you know it's um, probably not all that noticeable, I don't think. Guys, if you're not aware of the details of this car, it's a very similar size to a Tesla Model Y. It's 4,800 millimeters long. It's very, very similar in size, yeah, like I said, to a Model Y. And the curb weight is a bit heavier than a Model Y, which you would expect with a battery this size. It's got um, curb weight of 2,280 kilos for the lithium ion phosphate battery, the smaller battery. The long range rear wheel drive, I think is around 2,350 kilos and the long range all wheel drive is 2,470 kilos. And remember, these cars do get a fair, fair few more features than a Tesla Model Y. And that's part of the reason for the weight difference is the battery pack, plus you're getting Napa leather, you're getting other luxury features in the car like air suspension, also the heads up displays, additional displays, um, say for example, right in front of the driver. It just is a lot, nicer interior as well that accounts for some of the weight differences between for example the, the xpeng g6 the model y and the zika 7x the interior is um not changed very much now there's a, a video on reddit being shared around where they're saying oh look at this china version of the 7x it's so much better on the inside it's not really it just has some features that you got to pay more for if you want to pay more for them such as the fridge if you want to get a fridge you want to get those rear screens they're not free you got to pay for that stuff in china and internationally, Zika won't went well. Most people are not wanting to going to want to pay for that stuff internationally, so we won't make it standard. But if you want to, you can option the fridge in. I think it's about a thousand dollars if you want to have the fridge. I think it does heat food as well, so that is an option. Some people I know have actually ordered that from Zika, the fridge option. So yeah, interior not really any different. The screen looks the same. Um, the actual screen in front of the driver looks basically the same. The steering wheel looks the same. I can't tell really many differences on this newer version. Now, like I said, there is those screens for passengers in the back, but 
you like like I also did say that you've got to pay extra for those. It's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars more if you want to get those screens in China. So if you really want the screens like that, you can actually get them done aftermarket by I know people that do this stuff, right? So you can do that if you want to. Other configurations though, the all-wheel drive version gets internationally it has sensor-based frameless automatic doors and privacy glass for the rear row that's standard that hasn't changed the new model gets this the existing model gets it as well so guys obviously i'm a big fan of this car and that's the reason i ordered it. i just think for the price i mean it's seventy-three thousand australian dollars for the all-wheel drive version of this car and like i said you're getting napa leather you're getting air suspension you're getting 475 kilowatt for the existing version, the super seated version. Uh, but it's $73,000 and the Tesla Model Y is about $90,000. So it's a $17,000 price difference between the two cars. I just couldn't justify the, the price difference. So I think it's actually really, really good value for money. And you can see why I think most people, not everyone, but most people have ordered either the long range rear wheel drive or the all wheel drive. But I think most orders though have been for the all wheel drive version of this car now in china they're saying it's got 905 liters of boot space that's not actually correct that's measured to the roof not the correct measurements the real boot space is about 540 liters very very similar boot space size to an x peng g6 let me know your thoughts on this car is this too much power i mean is should a family sedan be able to go this fast 2.96 seconds 0 to 100 i think it's a lot of fun but i can tell you now i have driven some chinese evs that I think are overpowered. Uh, I don't think this is. I drove this on a track and on some streets and on some gravel and I did some some fun driving. I think it's actually quite well balanced, but some Chinese EVs, the, the chassis isn't really set up correctly to handle the crazy amount of power that they have. And EVs are not gonna start getting less powerful. They're only gonna get more and more powerful. You can see what's happening in China. Some people blame these Xiaomi Su7s uh, and just killing themselves because they're just, too much power. These people overestimate their driving skills. <laughs> they, yeah, unfortunately, it's not. It's not a laughing matter. I shouldn't smile. I shouldn't. I don't mean that at all. And they, you know, driving into poles and it's happening. Thanks for watching.